Welcome, Sanisa Estrada to ESPN Deportes Digital. And <laughs> so, Sanisa, you will be fighting Tina Ruprecht um, on March 25th to unify the WBA and WBC strawway titles um, in your backyard, in your turf, which is Fresno, California. Tell us how you're feeling about this fight. I'm feeling great. This is the biggest fight of my career. I'm so focused and so excited to just uh, become a fight champion. This is a step that I need to take in order to become undisputed champion, which is uh, my goal in this division. I want to be number one. I want to have all the bouts in this division. So this fight, uh, yeah, it means it means a lot. And you, you have this ability, this strength, which is that basically you can switch between Southpaw and Orthodox. Um, and what, what are you, what's your strategy with Tina Ruprecht? Um, this is like the first fight going into where I don't want to talk about strategy because I want, I don't want Tina to know anything about my game plan or what I'm going to do, because I know they're expecting me um, to go in there and be a certain fighter which I know they're preparing for, but I'm going to go on there and I'm going to do so many different things that she's not expecting. I'm going to make her feel uncomfortable because she's never felt, um, she's never, no opponent that she's faced has ever made her step out of her comfort zone and, um, and make her feel uncomfortable. So from the first round on, um, my game plan is to just, uh, take her out of her comfort zone and let her know that whatever she's done before with her previous opponents is not going to work against me. And you say this is uh, the most important fight of your life. So what makes it be the most important fight? Um, it's the most important fight because it is my first unification fight. And if I um, step out of this ring, the winner, I will have three titles in the division. Um, so WBA, WBC, and including the ring magazine belt. And after this, I want to go after um, the other champion in the, in the division and, ha and have my first undisputed fight so I can have all the bouts in the division. So this is the, this is the most important fight to me because this is the first step to becoming undisputed. And speaking of the other champion in the division, Yokata Valle, um, there has been some tension, if you will, in January, there was the words, a war of words in, on social media. Um, tell us about that. Um, yeah, so she's been pretty vocal about saying that uh, she's been, that she's, she's been calling me out and that, um, and that, uh, that I'm afraid to fight her, which is definitely not true because I remember going into the Golden Boy office two to three years ago and telling Robert Diaz, I want to fight um, the, I want to fight the IBF champion Valle. And Robert Diaz said, who is that? And I said, she's the, she's a champion from Costa Rica. So he looked into her and um, contacted her team a couple of different times to make the fight happen. But we uh, couldn't make the fight happen for whatever reason, which was, which was on, on her side, not on mine. And, um, and uh, yeah, so I, I've been saying that I wanted to fight her for years. I'm not afraid of her. She said I was afraid of her, but that's absolutely not true. If there's any fighter that I'm ever going to be afraid of, it's definitely not going to be Yokosta Vaya because I've watched her fight many times and um, our skill levels are just completely different and on a totally different level. And I want to, I want to fight her and I want to take those bouts from her and show her that she's not on my level. And it's going to be great to not only defeat Vaya, but to defeat Golden Boy as well. <laughs> so it's kind of like a, it's going to be a bittersweet moment. It's probably going to be the, the best feeling for me. And one of her two losses actually was against Tina Ruprecht back in 2018. Which is yes, what you said. One her, in <laughs> yeah, one of her, her losses was to Tina. So um, I want to go in there and I want to show um, her how to defeat a champion like Tina because um, I know my skill level is a lot different than, than the both of them. So I just want to go in there and show um, and, and show that uh, I'm not 
going to let De Tina defeat me the way she defeated Vaya. So what would happen if you do, right? And uh, that's the plan to defeat Tina. Um, and then would that unification or to become the fight to become undisputed, would that be, be happening this year in theory? Would you like it to yes. happen this year? Definitely. I would, I would love for it to happen this year. I would love for it to happen after this um, unification fight with Tina. If we can go into having a summer fight um, for the undisputed would be idea of what I would love to do. And how does it feel to be at this point in your career in the mix in the pound for pound um, lists on ESPN, Sports Illustrated, so how does it feel uh, about where you are? But what else do you want to prove? It feels great, but I feel like I'm still not where I, I should be on pound for pound lists or even um, just, just in general, because also having that 11 months of being off kind of, I felt like it just set me back a little bit. Um, but I, I, feel, I feel great where I'm at now. I feel like now's the time now's the perfect time in women's boxing for me to just get back in the mix and to rise even higher on the pound for pound list and to just show everybody who i am and with top rank i feel like this is exactly where i belong this is the platform that i belong on this is the type this is the promoter that i belong with um who is going to support me in all of my my goals as far as the champions that i want to face and what i want to do and accomplish in the sport so um I, i'm really happy that this year I'll be in the mix with all the other women who put on big fights last year and who are going to put on big fights this year. I'm just happy to be um, a fighter who's going to be a part of that, a part of um, bringing women's boxing to an even higher level. And in fact, there are a few unified um, undisputed champions. There's Alicia Baumgartner just joined the list, but Clarissa Shields, Chantel Cameron, Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano. Um, and so, of course, it's your goal to join them as yes, well. Yes, I definitely, um, this year I would like to, to join them in being um, undisputed. They're all in um, higher weight classes. So I'm looking forward to bringing the attention and the, the, the exciting, entertaining fights to the lower weight class because there hasn't been anybody like me to be able to give that exposure to the smaller weight classes. So um, I definitely want to do that. And what comes after that? There's been some talk that you would go up in weight class, maybe have a rematch with Marlene Esparza, who you already um, defeated. Yeah, she's at 112. So my what I want to do is go to 108 after this, after I become undisputed at 105. So I would go to 108 first and I would like to face um, whoever has all the belts there and, and be undisputed at 108. Um, and then go to 112. Um, I don't know if Esparza will still be at 112. She might be moving up, but um, I don't know. It's Esparza. It seems like she's she doesn't really want to fight again. I don't know. She hasn't. If she wanted to, she would come to 108 and meet me there because I went up two weight classes the first time to fight her. Um, but there's just no. Um, there's really hasn't there's really much that not much that's been said about her wanting to to have a rematch with me so I'm not really even thinking about her right now I'm just kind of thinking okay if I'm after I become undisputed at 108 maybe I'll go to 112 or maybe I'll just I'll have a fight at Bantamweight against someone at Bantamweight and just completely challenge myself that's what I want to do I want to challenge myself to like the full extreme going up in Bantamweight would be crazy because I would probably barely weigh in at 115 um so i'll be fighting someone who's a lot heavier physically and a lot bigger but i think it'll be really cool to just challenge myself and just go for go for brokes and just fight at bantamweight like i don't know who, who yeah. knows we'll see what happens um after i become undisputed at 108 also well 108 jessica neri plata has two of the belts there um while uh, one of the champions is in recess. So mm -hmm. Jessica Neri Plata has been pretty impressive. But yes, you're right. Um, Marlene Esparza at 33, who knows what's going to happen. Um, yeah, but yeah, Plata is a good fighter and I've, I've watched her for a long time. Like me and my dad used to watch her fights when she was fighting in Mexico, all, all her fights. And um, so I've known who she, who, she, who she is for a long time. So um, I would 
definitely like to, to fight her. And if she has all the bouts, I would like to fight her for all the bouts. Mm-hmm. And I know she, she also said um, in a previous interview after she defeated um, Caval, she said that um, her dream would be to come to the U.S. and, and fight me. So that's, it's great that she would be willing to do that. That would be amazing. That would be incredible to see. <laughs> um, how about the support? How have you felt the support as your career grows and as your name becomes more well known? Have you felt the support? I yeah, I definitely have. Um, but I feel like it's it's not even the start of all the support I'm gonna I'm gonna start to gain, especially this year with being being active and being back and you know, having the exposure, not just inside of the ring, but outside of the ring. I feel like all the support, I'm about to just barely feel it this year. Like this is going to be a huge year for me. So I'm excited to, to feel all the support um, this year and just gain new fans. And um, you being Mexican American, do you feel that Mexico and Mexican people who love boxing have embraced you? Um, yeah, I think so. And I think, um, uh, of course there's always that, like that whole fan there, that, that certain Mexican American fan base who's like, or Mexican fan base who are, you know, call fighters who are Mexican American, not real Mexicans or not being able to speak Mm -hmm. fluent Spanish, you know, say that we're not real Mexicans, which of course it's just, that's something that of course I'll hear here and there, but, um, I'm, I'm Mexican. My blood's Mexican. I am, I, I fight with that Mexican heart and pride. I I take pride in being Mexican American. Every time I step into the ring, I know that I'm fighting to, um, to just inspire all of my fans who are not just, not just every, not just all my fans from wherever they are, but also mainly my, the Mexican Americans, the Mexican fan base. I want to inspire everyone who, who's Mexican American and Mexican to let them know that everything, anything is possible. And speaking of pride, um, your next fight will be during March, which is women's history month. When you started fighting, when you were eight years old, did you ever envision that you would be making history? Your name will always be in the history books as a champion, Denise Estrada. Um, and, and, and that boxing would have grown so much by this time. Uh, I did, I didn't know. I knew it when I was a little girl, like (laughs) it's crazy to, when I would tell people that they would think I was crazy. A lot of times I wouldn't even want to tell people that like, I knew that I'm, that I know I'm going to be a world champion. I know I'm going to be fighting on TV. I know that I'm going to change women's boxing. Like I never wanted to tell people that because they would have thought that I was crazy, (laughs) but I always knew it. I always knew that women's boxing will be where it's at today. Of course, it took a lot of patience and a lot of struggle. I didn't know when that moment was or when it was going to happen, but the moment is here now. And it's actually the most perfect timing because I'm just getting into the prime of my career. And I'm now, you know, with such a great promoter with the, on this great platform. And I feel like everything just came together at such a perfect time. So and fighting on fighting in Women's History Month on March 25th, I'm happy to be ending the year um, to ending the ending the month. I mean, I'm sorry, ending the Women's History Month with um, a great performance and representing all women. And I did some really cool things this, this, uh, this month for women's history month. I have a, uh, a, a, a Nike campaign that, um, will be coming out this month. That that was really cool. So I'm just, I'm just happy to be able to share my story on with such a great, um, with such a great company like Nike and be able to represent women. Beyond unifying, you want to become the undisputed champion, but what other challenges do you think you want to meet in boxing? I think just continuing to open the doors for other women and young girls who are coming up, just keep, keep, um, keep putting on exciting and good performances. That way women's boxing can gain more fans. And just the, the big challenge is just breaking down those barriers and just continuing to open up the doors in the sport. Great. And is there any message that you want to send for the fight? 
to fans? Um, yeah, I just want to tell everybody to, to tune in March 25th um, to ESPN to watch me become Unified Champion. It's going to be um, a great performance and a great night for me. And I just thank everybody for all of the support. Great. Thank you.